The Skyrim Total Conversion Mod Enderall by Sure AI has received critical acclaim from the Skyrim modding community. It's now time to do that which we do, mod the crap out of it. In this first episode of the Enderall Modding Guide, we'll recap installation process and give you some important updated information. Then we delve deep into the data files for some useful nuggets, talk performance improving tweaks, and more. Hey guys and gals, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel, and welcome to the first episode of the Enderall Modding Guide. Now, many of you may be wondering, what is the purpose of this guide? You know, Enderall is a great game, and I call it a game because I think it is a game unto itself. Rather than just a mod that overhauls Skyrim, I think of it as a complete game. But it is a complete game, and why do we need to mod it? Well, there's a lot of times that you may want to change things or improve things to your personal liking, and this guide will help you do that. Now, of course, we're using Mod Organizer. And why do we use Mod Organizer? Because it's power and flexibility. It's all about power and flexibility. And the more you use Mod Organizer, the more you know you need it. Of course, my 2016 Skyrim modding guide basically overhauls Skyrim for my own personal taste and to update things with new mods. And it provides a basis for what we'll be doing here. Many of the mods that I'll be using there I'll be trying to transfer over by changing things or even adding new mods that may be specifically designed for Enderall or may work better than mods we've used in the 2016 Skyrim modding guide. So with that, let's get started. A couple weeks ago, I put out a video for the Enderall installation guide and basically it showed you how to go through and install it a couple of different ways, both for a normal installation, how to get all the parts and pieces together, how to put it together into your Skyrim game, and then I showed you how to use Mod Organizer for it, and then I put together a parallel installation that had both Enderall and Skyrim at the same time. You can see I have dual installations up here and dual folders up here. Let's do a quick recap on what I did. If you open up my Enderall folder and go into Common, you can see I have both Skyrim and Enderall. And what I did was I just copied Skyrim, put it in Enderall, or made a copy of it and called it Enderall, and then I uninstalled my old mod organizer and put in a new mod organizer so I had a fresh clean slate. Now why did I do that? So I would have all the other little things that I wanted in here, especially the E and B files because E and B boost does work and it's basically going to work just fine. With that in mind, I already have a, you can see the fresh install of the Enderall version of mod organizer. And of course it doesn't look anything like my 2016 Skyrim modding guide for Skyrim. Now, when you do it with Mod Organizer, you run it through SKSE, but we covered that in the video. There are a couple updates that I wanted to tell you about because of changes to the launcher. When you come over to the internet and you take a look at SureAI.net site, this is the homepage for the Sure AI and Enderall site, you can see they've had a number of patches released. And all the way back in August, I'm not going to scroll down all the way down, but August 16th, they released Enderall patch 1.1.1.1. And that had some important things about the launcher, and this is the changes we had to do. Remember in the first installation guide, I had to go through and change the names of this and this to try and trick the Enderall launcher to working correctly. Now with the updated versions, when if you were to run the Enderall launcher, it will not try to auto-populate into the Steam version of Skyrim, it will perfectly stay fine right here. Now they've had a couple updates before, but if you have not updated since August 16th, you need to go to the Enderall site, which is right here, and you can go through system requirements, installation package, get to go through the launcher, and get the latest Enderall launcher file. And download that to wherever you keep your downloads. And of course, I've already placed that on my desk right here. And if you need to update this, and they've had a recent update to Enderall launcher that changes things a little bit, 1.1.3.3 changes the Enderall launcher just a smidge. So if you're ever updating this, all you have to do is drag it and drop it in. It's going to ask you to replace the file and go ahead and do so. Now you can go ahead and launch Enderall from within your Enderall file and it won't auto-populate into Skyrim or wherever else. And you can see we have some information there, but that's how it works. So go ahead and now you are updated on your Enderall launcher. 
we can go ahead and I'm just going to minimize that down. And we are going to talk about Mod Organizer and what I did. Of course, you can see all the mods I have installed so far. I'm not going to do this step by step because I've got parallel projects running and I need to have all these mods installed at one time. But we installed a new profile for Endraw, just named it Endraw from default. You saw that in the videos. There's nothing really to tell you about that. But there are a couple new things for the new launcher. Because it, you saw it was 32-bit, we now can now run the Endraw launcher from the Mod Organizer main page. And when you open that up and run it, you can see we now have the newest version of the launcher.en, okay? So you can now do this. There are a couple specific caveats on why this is important. One of the main things is that in your any files for Mod Organizer, you can see those right here, your any editors, and you can have different versions based off of different things. And we'll get more into these any files and make changes I made. But you can actually change either the default.any or the enderall.any, whichever one you have. And you can do that through the launcher. In settings, you can go ahead and see that if you go through all your details, visibility, audio, all this stuff, and save settings, it will automatically save them to your profile. So you don't need to go through and make copies of the enderall any files from your documents section on your documents page of Internet Explorer and then copy them over to Mod Organizer like we did before. Now you can just go ahead and save your settings for the profile that you have and it will change it accordingly. We will come back to this, but I wanted to let you know about the changes. There is one other change that we need to talk about, and that is updating. I talked to the guys over at Sure AI and asked them about a couple of questions I had regarding updating through Mod Organizer or Nexus Mod Manager, and they do not recommend doing that. What happens if you were to try to update through Mod Organizer? It would actually create all the updates and throw them into your overwrite file for you to create a mod out of and then place it at the top of your priority page in the left pane. With that in mind, I am going to suggest that you follow Sure AI's recommendations for updating. If you do need to update, do not try to update through the Mod Organizer launcher version. Go back into your Endraw launcher, go through and update that way. That way all the changes will be directly overwritten to the Enderall ESPs and BSAs that they have included. So if you ever want to update it, and you see I have the update for 1.1.3.3, and you can download that now, and it will update appropriately for you without creating an overwrite file into Mod Organizer. Okay, you can see that the update was up to date and we are all done there. Now we can go ahead, I'm actually going to close that down. We are going to talk a bit about what I did in addition to this. In the Enderall launcher, remember we talked about there are backups in Skyrim. Mine's completely empty. Because I consider Enderall to be its own game and because they are separate installations run parallel, I didn't need all those backup files. So to save space, I completely deleted the backups because I don't need them because I have Skyrim elsewhere. So that's one way to save space. There's a couple things we want to talk about inside of Enderall. And if you come into Common, Steam, Steam Maps, Common, Enderall, you'll come over down to Data. And inside Data, there are a number of SKSE files. And remember, Enderall comes in pre-installed with a number of mods, including Sky UI, which is not configured here, but it does include one tweak and it does include crash fix plugins. Now, it also comes with SKSE, and you can see the SKSE plugin right there, but I wanted to show you all the ones we'll be talking about. So let's talk first about SKSE plugin. And when you open up this up, and there's a couple of different ways, just Notepad it, or my preferred way, of course, is to use Notepad++. You can see you have general memory display and debug. Now display I added. Because of the step guide recommendations, if you were to add something like a war paint or makeup mod, which I have tested and it does work, you will quite often need to add these two lines. And it's bracket display, bracket, and then the second line, I tint texture resolution equals 2048. 
That way you're getting high resolution for your war paint, scars, makeup, that sort of thing. And I have tested them and they do work fine. So I'll include these two lines in the description below in the video. So you can just copy and paste them into your skse.ini. And then, of course, save it. And it works just fine, but everything else is there. Now, this will become relevant later on, but you'll see you have Shishin's SKSE memory patch, and it is memory default heap initial alloc MB768 and scrap heap size MB equals 256. These were already done by the Sure AI team in the SKSE installation, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, because of that in mind, you'll notice I do not have an SKSE file like I would have for Skyrim normally for scripts. Okay, I have a SKSE crash fix logs, but I can talk about that later. The other plugins that you have available are the onetweak.ini. And you can see all the different settings for that as well. And you can talk, we'll talk a bit about that when we talk about settings inside the launcher. And then of course you have the crash fix plugin.ini, and you can see all the information there. Now, there's a couple of important notes about this one. If you followed my 2016 Skyrim modding guide where I talked about crash fixes, you can see in that video, I wanted to use the new memory configuration provided by MEH321. So I tried doing it the same way. I changed use OS allocators equals zero, I changed it to one. And then I went through and used the SKSE preloader created by Shison and MEH321 to add the two files into the main directory to make it work. Now, I was having a number of crashes, mainly when I loaded in new saves. In other words, I do a lot of testing. I have to go back into saves. And when I exited the game. So it does not work correctly. If anyone else has some information on this, I would appreciate it. Just send me a message in the comments and I'll look at it again. But for right now, it doesn't work. All right, so we're just gonna save that back to zero. And we are just going to use the SKSE memory patch provided by Shison, and it works just fine. There are two other notes on this crash fix plugin.ini, and you can, we'll just jump into mod organizer real fast, and we'll take a look. If you scroll down and you'll start getting these, the first time you get a, crash, you'll get a SKSE plugins crash fix.ini log, and it will tell you what type of crash you have. But from that point on, you'll often get inside your overwrite, you'll get an SKSE file. Now there's nothing in this time, but a lot of times you'll have the crash fix plugins and all this other information in this box. This is being generated by the crash fix plugin.ini. And there's a couple different ways to fix this. And I, I'll show you the one I decided to do. If you scroll down to record crash info equals one, log message, me, let me highlight it, log message to file equal one. Both of these are generating the information that's creating that in your overwrite. If you are not having any crashes and you just want to keep your overwrite clean, you're going to change both of these entries to zero. In other words, crash record, record crash info equals zero and log message to file equals zero. And then save your file. It will no longer throw things into the overwrite. But just so you know, until you're completely sure that your game is running without any crashes of any type, I would go ahead and leave it active for right now. I'm going to delete those because I don't need them. I just wanted to have them for an example for you. So there's that. So let's talk a bit about performance and performance settings. You know, we're going to open this back up into Mod Organizer and we're going to launch the launcher through Mod Organizer so we can take a look at the settings. Now on the first page, you see one tweak. I have deactivated it. It is deactivated because I have the options to click and unclick the windowed mode. You know that it's been deactivated. And I have my resolution set at 2560 by 1440. Normally, one tweak doesn't cause me any problems. However, while if I have it active, I was having all sorts of weird issues with screens not popping up right, and I'd have to go back in and reset them and unset them. So that's why one tweak is off. And I wanted to show you the one tweak.ini file, and you could probably activate it and then try to play with the 
OneTweet.ini to try and get it to work correctly. I do miss not being able to alt tab out right now, but I wanted to, you know, at least point that out that one tweak is not acting normally for me. So when talking about your settings for performance purposes, you have anti-aliasing and anthroscopic filters. I have them both turned off. And the next page, I have FXAA off. Why is this relevant? Well, I'm using EN Boost, and if you want to see my EN Boost video on Skyrim and how to set it up. I have episode number two. You can go and see that. But basically, I'm just going to close this down for now, open up my files again, and you can see my ENB files are right here in the ENB local.ini. If you scroll down to the ENB files, I'm letting the EN boost handle all of my anthroscopic filtering and my anti-aliasing. You can see all of mine are set to true. And the reason why I do that is I find it works very well without that much performance hit. But in the settings for the Enderall launcher, you can see I have mine set to very high. Now, I find it works very well. I tried it ultra and it was causing some performance slowdowns. A lot of areas in this general setting, I was getting 50 to 53 for most areas. As soon as I turned off the anti-aliasing, both on this page, under details, the FXAA, I was getting much better performance. That's with very high. If you see, those are my settings for common. Details, of course, FXAA is off. You can see the rest of the settings I have for textures, blur quality, shadow details, and decal count. Visibility are set fairly high. I could probably increase the reflection draw distance a little bit. But for right now, it's working very well. And then audio, game, and I just have, those are my basic settings. Optimization, you can see those. Other settings, and of course, controls. I was still getting FPS drops as elsewhere. Now, if you save the settings, it would go into your, your of course, your mod organizer innies, but we're going to quit this. I was still getting performance hits elsewhere, and one of the things I noticed is that very, very lush grass in Skyrim always causes an FPS hit. I want to try and get to 60 frames per second as close as I possibly could get. So I went in and I looked at the any settings for Endral, and one of the things I noticed when I scrolled down to grass, this entry was not there. I min grass size equals 70 is one I put in. This will not be here in your default Skyrim any for Enderall. You can safely add it in, and I will include a screenshot right here of what it looks like with I min grass size equals 70, what it looks like. And it looks fairly good. I don't have any problems with it. There are probably other any settings that are not here in the Skyrim.any or in the Skyrim prefs that any that may improve performance or appearance, but I'm going to leave those for a later time. Just for right now, I only added in I min grass size equals 70. And you can see from that picture, it looks fairly well. It looks pretty good, but it did boost my performance from 50 to 53 up to a base 60 for most exterior cells. Now, there are certain areas that do have an FPS drop, but just like any other mod that increases buildings or wherever else, you'll have those drops occasionally, but it did improve it greatly wherever there was grass, and that basically includes all the outside cells. It did improve it a lot. You don't get rid of grass this way. You know, you can allow create grass, you can set this to zero, and you'll have no grass, but by decreasing the grass size, of course, you can play with this and just remember 70 is the number I used. If you go down a number from 70 to like 50, you'll have slightly taller grass, but more FPS hit. And if you go up higher from 70, you'll have less grass, but less performance hit. That's just what I'm doing. So there's that. And there are, I'm sure, other tweaks that are available, but you saw the ones that I'm using in this guide. Now we can start going ahead and installing all these mods. And now what I do is I primarily don't download mods using my Enderall version of Mod Organizer. I will go ahead and have the Skyrim version of Mod Organizer up if I'm going to be downloading any mods from the Nexus. 
And the reason why I do that is so it's, I only have to manage one Nexus profiles and log in and all that stuff. So I just remember if I'm going to download something that's specific for Enderall, I just make sure I have Skyrim open for doing that. Now, why do I do that? Because you can see down here, the downloads, I have show hidden is off. But if I were to show all my hidden mods, this file directory is from my location where I have all my mod organizer ones. So I just want to show you this to you. I covered it in the first video, but I just want to remind you once again, if you come over to configure settings and workarounds and you see the download directory, E mod organizer, Skyrim downloads, you can change it back and forth to different places. And this way I have all my downloads in one place and they are sharing a download directory with both my mod organizer for Skyrim and my mod organizer for Enderall. So you'll see that a lot of times. I don't download directly when I'm in the Enderall mod organizer. I simply have it the other way around. So that's just a, a personal quirk I do, but it does allow me to have access to all the mods I've already installed for Skyrim and not having to have a dual locations and more memory usage or more storage usage for mod organizer by having the two mod organizers in separate places. So that's just what I'm doing, guys. Now, in the further episodes, we'll start installing stuff. We'll just start with the basics, and I'll just come up with game plan and how we want to go through all these. But this series will not be as extensive as the 2016 Skyrim Modding Guide because two factors. Number one, Enderall is a little restrictive of what mods you can have. And number two, I think that having a mostly vanilla experience for Enderall is a good idea. But there's a lot of things you can improve, a lot of things that will make life easier for you, and we'll start installing them. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the series. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.